mm-hmm. fine by me. Um, so it's been a thing that has been on my heart for years and yeah. years, even before I started that process here. Um, and I'm really excited to make it a priority. Like I just, I put it on hold. I put it on hold twice yeah. and I'm not willing to do it anymore. Um, and I'm not, I'm certainly not in a place where I'm ready to say yes to a kid full time, but um, I'm, I want to start that process because it is a long one. Like it yeah. probably is going to take me an entire year to get through the training process in Tennessee mm-hmm. and then to work with a placement person who's then going to sort of assess my situation and right. then go through the process of the home study and getting that approved. Okay. And, you know, so wait, it's a let's, lot. let's stop here for a second because there, I don't know the foster system per, mm. like intimately. I have never experienced it on either direction. Um, but kind of on the outside, people view these, you, you hear story after story after story of these horrific foster parents. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what you're talking about, like there is a huge process that you have to go through that could potentially take a year. There's a lot, there's a lot of checks and balances there. How do those horrible foster parents that you hear about get through that process? It is a lot less strict in some places. The process in California is major in comparison to the process in Tennessee. The training that I was going through here was very different than the training that's there. The training that I was going through with my agency here, the agency I was working with is TLC and they're based out of Sebastopol and they have a lot of like trauma informed care training that is mandatory. That is not as prevalent in Tennessee. So there's, you you go through the, the basics and you go through the training. There is training in every state, but the process is a lot easier. It's a lot more lax in some places. And I don't know as much about that in Tennessee because I haven't gone through it yet. Um, I have to have an info meeting before I start training. And mm-hmm. I imagine I'll like learn a lot more about what that looks like in Tennessee versus California or really anywhere else. But um, it is, I mean, it is a bit of an epidemic, especially in the South. And, mm-hmm. and I think a part of that plays into like the opioid crisis is, right. is also, it is, displacing a lot of kids and it's also paving the way for a lot of foster parents who should not necessarily be foster parents to kind of go through the system because they are desperate for foster parents. And like, I don't think that that's, I don't, I think it is a terribly flawed system. So people are going to kind of get through the cracks of that. Um, And I don't know enough about it to sort of speak to like any sort of percentage of bad placements. Like I don't, I don't know that really. Um, but I've heard those same stories too. It makes me feel better that there is this screening process. Yeah, of course. But I mean, at the same time, like it's, it's a, st- you get a stipend mm-hmm. for having a foster kid. And if you are somebody who has a huge home and has the means to kind of like provide at least something for these foster kids, then you are sometimes able to pocket that stipend, which mm-hmm. is a business for some people as right. gross as that is. And as gross as that sounds, because it is gross and terrible. And I yeah, just hate the idea of that, but it, you know, it becomes something that is potentially financially lucrative, right. which is why then people were more willing to kind of go through mm-hmm. the ropes of like getting all of this done and getting approved to be a foster okay. parent because yeah. you can then all of a sudden. I mean, obviously I just support. have these visions in my head of like, it's just the stories that you hear, whether you hear hear them on the news or movies that have been made after it or whatever. And I've always had this like, Oh, my heart goes out to foster children because the, it seems like not knowing for sure that the likelihood is very high that a child can be placed with a really gross parent Mm -hmm. who is going to, you know, you know, like the best case scenario, neglect them. In the worst case case scenario, there's like some horrific abuse or, mm-hmm. or you know, negligence there or whatever. But yeah, um, I mean, I don't, I, I have observed, my observation is that, yes, it is a broken system and it is something that needs a lot of attention and so many more resources than it has available. But my personal take on it is that I would rather be working within the system. Oh, yeah. To kind of make whatever difference I can versus just observing. From I the cannot outside. think so. of a human better suited to be <laughs> a foster parent than you. <laughs> oh, my God. I I can tell uh, you right now, I will cry. The day that you put the announcement out there that you have a child, I will cry. I'll cry. I'm, too. Sure. <laughs> I'm sure. I cried when I just like registered for the classes. I was like, uh, hello, I need oh, somebody to hold my me. Oh, <laughs> God. Call one of your cats. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so. The other day you made, you put a post up there and I don't know why I was surprised by this. I think I even replied like, Oh my God, you just amaze me every time you post something. Mm-hmm. You were playing the guitar and you were singing on this post. <laughs> and I know, like, 
I've known that you have a music background, but because I never see like you in that filter, you know what I mean? It's always Laura friend, Laura, you know, who knows somebody I know, Laura, the photographer, like I've never actually witnessed you in music. Um, you put that up there and I got goosebumps. I was like, Oh yeah, of course she can fucking play the guitar and sing. <laughs> like, why am I surprised by this? And it was, I was so happy that you did it because to me, and you maybe not have felt this way because music is your thing, but for me to do something like that, I hear that. <laughs> That's the downside to, to go, having Daniel. a studio in the basement. <laughs> Good one. Um, yeah. Chairs moving on your head. Um, I could not think of anything more horrifying than me trying to perform something like that and put it on social media. Well, now, also, you, I don't have a music background. What so. you didn't see is the most mediocre musical event I of know. the year. Sorry. That I'm I, posted. I didn't even watch it. Oh, don't worry. It was recorded on Facebook Live okay. and it's on my Facebook page. I'm going to watch it. Please don't. Me, I'm <laughs> going to. And I'm going to tell everybody on the podcast this I'm thing. mortified <laughs> by the amount of like touring Why? musician friends of mine that like watched it. Like I was like, oh my God, did you really? I mean, it was just, a, it was, it's been a, like a family tradition for a while and we've had like friends of ours that like facetime in and we'll watch it i mean it is just i mean it's a joke like it's it's so fun it's nice to have like you know my family can be tricky like we have like this common goal this thing that we do every year like this like christmas concert and like we just decided (laughs) i mean my brother and i made a fake album cover for like the most mediocre music (laughs) musical event of the year and um i'm for sure posting that link on my (laughs) podcast (laughs) facebook yeah well and part of it was like i had just done that and i was like i don't care and also i mean just to kind of keep it super real like I, the guitar that I was playing in that, I got the week of my friend's funeral. Um, and I lost a good friend of mine, um, in October and I just, uh, I just, I wrote a song for her and I decided like, and I was asked to play it at her service and I decided that I could not play that song on the untunable piece of fire kindling that I had been like, you know, learning to play the guitar again on. Um, And so I went to a woman owned music store in East Nashville, Fanny's house of music. And I found this guitar and I called some friends and I was like, I don't know. Like, I don't really even know what I'm looking for. Um, But I I need, you know, this is what I'm doing. And I had uh, two or three people that like, I did a like, you know, phone consult while they were on the road. And then my friend Amy came and played the guitar and was like, okay, like this is, it's totally sound. And so I had this guitar and the song that I played and I put on Facebook was the last song that I was supposed to sing at her funeral. And for reasons that were sort of outside of everybody's control, the where her it was a celebration of life and where her service was, we were on very strict time constraints. And so the service started running over and her husband ended up like wrapping up the, oh, yeah. the service early. And so we cut that and we cut a few other things. And so I was just like, you know what? Like I just am feeling really strongly like that this song that was supposed to be at the end of this, like it, like I want to to share it for the same reasons. Like they, they wanted it at the service. And so I, uh, it was kindness by Ben Glover who has, um, become a friend in Nashville. It was recorded by Amy on her album too. And um, it was just this song that like I heard and it just kind of like settles in your bones. I'm like, my God, it's just so beautiful. And it was the last song I played to my friend Kirsten when uh, she was in the hospital oh. and um, she never, she didn't get to hear the song I wrote for her. Um, although I still just would say that she's heard it already. And oh, that's of course. Fine. Totally. Um, but I was like, you know what? Like, I just played this stupid Christmas concert. <laughs> I have nothing to lose. And this just feels like, I mean, it just feels like kind of like a song to end the decade with. And moving to Nashville, I kind of feel like it encouraged me to like, to just allow music back into my life in a way that I was kind of ready to just like put it on a shelf. Yeah. And be like, that's not really what I do. That's not who I am. And I'm, I mean, my God, I'm never like, I do not want to play out. I do not want to be a touring musician. Like I do not have career aspirations of being like a musician yeah. for a job. Like that is not my path. I don't think like, you know, never say never, I guess, but yeah. also like, that's just not what, it, you know, that's, 
I play it for joy. I, like right. I pick up an instrument for joy, which is why I never touch my clarinet ever. Um, <laughs> and so if it doesn't feel like, because it isn't work for me, like it yeah. is this thing, it has become this outlet that all of a sudden I'm like, right. Like I used to write all the time. I love writing. It's such a good way for me to process. And also I play music and now I can kind of like put these things together it just is this kind of like small world thing that sort of has brought me back to yeah. like, okay, yeah, like this can be a part of my life without it being my career. It doesn't have to be my career for yeah. me to still be a musician and still play music. And so that's kind of like the long story behind me being like, okay, yeah, I'm going to, I don't care. Like it was I'm gonna, lovely. I'm going to share it. It was so lovely. And I was I have so... nothing to prove and nothing to lose. <laughs> <laughs> I think, so I do think this is the one of the, one of the things that people love most about you. And at least something that draws me to you as well is like, I mean, you you have this kind of self-deprecating humor and you don't take yourself too seriously. Yet at the same time, you have so many gifts and you're willing to just embrace them. And um, I think, any, you know, regardless of whether like musically they, it was perfect or, you know, your musician professional friends would have thought that it was worth whatever. I think everybody who listened to it and especially anybody who you can call a friend probably was as moved as I was just to see you put it up there. And it's not mm. about whether it was perfect musically, but just the fact that there is a moment in which we got to see a side of you that quite frankly, we don't see very often, you know, maybe you, yeah, do, no. yeah. <laughs> so, um, nope. I thought it was lovely. I loved it. I sing and to my cats in my car I and did. in the shower. <laughs> I love to sing love of, I am not like, you probably don't want to hear me sing. I'll hear you um, sing. Definitely the podcast listeners do not want to hear me sing, but I think I have a lovely voice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have any cats. They might think I would love how your cats might think my voice is lovely, but yes, well, I'm a car singer. Um, I'm a shower singer. I am like, I don't know how to control my voice. So I sing really loud. So I could probably never sing into a microphone because people would be like, Oh my God, mm. <laughs> make her stop. But I have been known to walk around Keller Street co-work and, and like belt out a tune here there and go. there. That's and people spirit. are like, Whoa, what just happened? Hey, I'm um, going to shake it It feels up. good. You know, I don't have something like that. And I realized that at the end of that should be something that kind of goes on my Your new 2020 year. is yeah. like to just discover what it is tactically that I want to I want to do. Like mm -hmm. I, I can't play an instrument. I, you know, I can sing to myself, but do I want to learn how to do pottery? Like I've thought about that. Yeah. Or I, I I want something that I can do with my hands or do you, you like know, to with paint? No. Okay. Well, never mind. <laughs> I mean, I like to paint within like you give me a puzzle to do, or you give me, you know, a paint by numbers to do mm -hmm. or something that I do love that. I did one thing one time that um, was amazing. I bought this, I went to Legoland of all places with my kids, which you'd think would be a nightmare, but it actually was pretty cool. Um, and I bought this 3000 plus piece Lego set of the Sydney opera house. And it took me two years to put this thing together, but it was so meditative every time I sat down and it had the books, like it was full, yeah. like instructional. Like I had, there were three, probably 50 or 60 page instruction books to put this thing together. That felt really good. I felt like I was kind of meditative. It kind of took me outside of work or took me outside of kids, you know, whatever life was throwing at me. I actually went through a move, two moves and a divorce all in the period of time. It took me to put the damn Sydney opera house together, <laughs> probably saved my life or somebody else's life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, I would like to find something that I could escape mm -hmm. into. Um, and I think that's just going to take like exploring, right? Yeah. Like taking some time and go to a pottery class. I had Johnny Hirschmuggle and Jenny on here. Oh, I love um, them. They were amazing. Let me just say, I was so, I was so proud of Jenny. First of all, she came in here and, and, and we talked about you because she was like, I'm so, she almost didn't come because she was so nervous. And I remembered when you and I first started talking and you were fairly nervous. Um, mm -hmm. And that goes away after five minutes. Like yeah. I think just conversation, it just goes away. And I kept telling Johnny, I'm like, ask her to come. I think she's really going to love it. And if she hates it, we can just, she can just sit out and we don't have yeah. to publish it or whatever. Um, and it, you know, lo and behold, she was fine after a few minutes and she was, she actually wants to do it again, which I'm so <gasps> grateful for. Oh, they were lovely. The they were lovely. Um, and what I loved is that, 
when she comes back or when they come back, they're willing to dive into, this is might be something I do this year, like a topic um, as yeah. opposed to like sit around, you know, like and these happy hour conversations are great. And I love oh, yeah. them every now and then I want to kind of just, 